Welcome to Macomb Wesley United Methodist Church, those worshiping in person and those online and on the radio. If you are here in person, we have a connection card, our means to begin a journey of faith with you. There are also prayer cards in front of you. This is a unique day, isn't it? Caught between Lincoln's birthday and my wife's special birthday and also Valentine's Day. Lots to celebrate. I am Pastor Scott Grolke, serving with me as Pastor Melly Momo. Good morning. Today we begin a conversation on the impact of Christ's resurrection for the way we live. Maureen Nation offers this inspiration. stand as you're able and join me in this call to worship. Blessed are those who trust in God, who put their trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord.
How are you? Good. You've got red on. Did you do that on purpose? Did you pick that color out today? You did. And why did you do that? What's tomorrow? It's Valentine's Day at school. We have Valentine's Day, and I see some red out there, too. Look up there in the balcony. Look at his red shirt. So a lot of people wear red. And I brought some things today. Let's look and see what we have here. I brought a wooden cross. And you say, what's that got to do with Valentine's Day? This was a gift. We visited a church while we were out of town in January, and that was a gift for visiting their church. But this is a gift from God. This symbolizes that he gave his son Jesus to die on the cross that we may live forever. It was a, And so this is a happy thing that reminds us of a good thing. I also have a small one that you can carry with you. Someone has given that to me through the years. See how tiny he is? There's all sizes of crosses. But those are important to me as a Christian. Jesus said, we've got a verse here, and it is, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's John 15, 13. So it's a beautiful... When we think of Valentine's, we think of beauty, we think of flowers, don't we? Pretty things. But also the cross can be something beautiful for us. It's a message from God. I brought something for you today. What is that? Love. That's a heart. And you think of love when you see a heart. Would you like to wear one of these? They're little stickers. Or you can each take, I think I've got two sheets. You can take one with you. You might want to share that with some friends tomorrow or your school. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son that you gave to us, the gift of life eternal. Amen.
We come to a time of prayer, and we want to be in prayer for the family of David Hillier. Will you join me in this time? God, God of eternity, we rejoice in this day as a gift from you. We rejoice in the promise of life beyond this time on earth. And we pray that for the ways that our belief can affect our behavior. We pray for the new life in a world desperate for resurrection. We pray for nations where there is strife, violence, war. We pray for victims of natural disaster. We pray for the poor, the impoverished, here in our neighborhood and abroad. And we pray to be an answer to those prayers for someone. We pray for the, those who are ill, those who are hospitalized, those facing death, that they may trust the promise of resurrection through Christ. We pray that all might follow the living Christ who continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be revealed on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And as our ushers come forward, we receive this offering. Lord, we're grateful for these gifts. We pray they might be instruments now to serve others. In Christ's name, amen.
chapter 17, beginning in verse 5. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought. It is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse who can understand it. I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12 to 20. Would you stand if you are able? 
for reading of the New Testament. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is sure, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have, been, who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have died. The, the word of God to the people of God, you may be seated. <clears throat> In the first service, my voice didn't do anything bad, but I hope I'll, do, I'll be fine again. All right. <laughs> okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time that you have given us to share your words, to hear from you. Now I ask that your spirit will minister to each one of us gathered here, and you help us understand your will your words and use me as your instrument in the name of Jesus. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is a topic we barely talk about it in most mainline churches unless it's Easter Sunday or a funeral. Yet it is an important Christian doctrine in the life of believers, for it pertains to our present and future, our hope in life to come as well. Had it all ended on the cross, there would have been no good news to share. No bold church to bear witness. No New Testament to teach and preach. And no hope for, all, for, real, for real life here and day after. It is, it is impossible to overestimate the importance of the, of the resurrection to our faith. Let me clarify myself. I'm not saying the resurrection is the most important thing to ever took place. No. Jesus' birthday, a birth was important. His earthly ministry was important. His, his death on the cross and his resurrection all together were very important to complete God's redemption plan. John 3, verse 16, summarizes God's expression of love to humanity when he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus was born of water 
in spirit lived among those he came to save among us teaching the way of life to salvation he would go die on the cross as the only acceptable sacrifice to God to reconcile the world to himself Jesus shed blood offers us forgiveness of sins when he said the telestai it is finished his mission was accomplished our relationship with God the father was reestablished forever through Christ so the resurrection was not in question in Matthew 17 verse 20, 22 to 23 Christ is telling his disciples that what is going to happen to him he said the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men they will kill him and on the third day he will be raised to life the apostle Paul was the first New Testament writer to record what had happened at what had been preached about the resurrection for years he was the first New Testament writer to do so now while we do not have the precise question which prompted Paul to include this portion of Christ's history in his letter to the Corinthians we do not we do know that it had grown out of someone's questioning the resurrection in verse 12 and verse 12 suggests they had not questioned Christ's resurrection but whether Christian Christians who died would be raised something had happened perhaps a death in the church that had served as a catalyst for discussion Chaffin writes in his commentary this if they had the New Testament, they could not, they, they could have read the comforting words from John 11, verse 12, which says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. The Apostle Paul was a great believer in discussion and debates which turned to be a good opportunity for him to engage with people he shared the good news with and win them to Christ he said this in Romans 10 verse 14 how can people have faith in the Lord and ask him to save them if they have never heard about him and how can they hear unless someone tells them he also says in 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 5 verse 11 that since then we know what it is to fear the Lord we try to persuade others what we are in plan what we are is plan to God 
And I hope it is also plain to your conscience. See, Paul was God's vessel for the teaching of the good news, and still he is today, for we resource from his writing. He would ask his audience in the Corinthian church, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? And in verse 13, he says, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. The, re the resurrection is an extra extremely important part of our re reality as Christian. I want us to understand that and Paul is saying if you reject the doctrine of the resurrection from the dead you are also you also reject that Jesus was raised from the dead. So they go hand in hand. And if you reject this then there are consequences. And those consequences are you, can tr you can't trust the apostles' teaching. You can't trust the, the apostles at all. And our faith is, is fertile, uh, fertile. There is no hope beyond life. There is no hope in life today and there is no hope beyond life. If Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain. And your faith has been in vain. The apostles thought that they saw Jesus alive. They saw him killed. They saw him dead. They saw him buried. And then they saw him alive again. You read that as well in chapter 15, 1 Corinthians, verses 3 to 8. And Pastor Scott dealt with that last Sunday. If all this was not true, then all that we have in the New Testament will be vain and empty. See, the resurrection of Jesus was what confirmed and validated everything about him, everything about Jesus. See, his resurrection is what fills the good news with power. The disciples wouldn't have come out of the hidings to preach the good news to the world if Christ didn't show up in the closed door room. If Christ didn't show up to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. If Christ didn't show up to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. If Christ didn't show up to many who saw him. It was after he was risen, then he would send the Holy Spirit to believers the good news empowering them and you uh, and us to share the good news with others one another that Christ died for us he died for them he is alive and he is coming back the dead will rise and the living will join him 
when that trumpet of God sounds. In verse 15 and 16, it says, we are say we are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised him. That's big. Whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. So not only is the apostles teaching vain and empty if Jesus was not raised from the dead but it is but it is all lies and deception either Jesus resurrection was the truth or else all the apostles were lying in verse 17, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is sure and you are still in your sins. Wow. Without Jesus' resurrection, our faith will not only be vain, but it will be also fertile and misguided. If faith in Jesus Christ only makes says if he was raised from dead from the dead verses 18 to 19 then those who those also who have died in Christ have perished if for this life only we have hoped in Christ we are also all we are of all people most to be pitied. See, if Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead, they, there would be no hope of awakening for those who have fallen asleep, for those who have died. So the people whom you see live the Christian life whom you witness and whom you really felt they did right, whom you know well, even God himself, so it means God himself knows, so it means those are not going to wake up when that trumpet sounds, when you don't believe in the resurrection. See, all the hope we have of our loved ones who had gone before us that we shall see them again in, go in glory would be in vain. Without the resurrection, we Christians will just be pitiful. We will be wretched, sad, misled people who gave up everything for a false hope. Dr. Carla Works, who is one of the New Testament professors at Wesley Seminary in DC. She is a Pauline scholar. Says this in a commentary on our today's reading, and I quote In an age where many churches are experiencing decline in attendance, some have intentionally decided to share only portions of the gospel that are seeker friendly. In other words, advice that sounds like wise counsel for living, like being kind to one another and living peaceably while they are worthy goals, and they are worldly, they are worthy gold goals. The gospel demands more. At the core of the gospel is a God who refuses to abandon creation to the corrupting powers of sin and death. 
is a God of life. And that is good news indeed. The question for us today is, do we believe in the resurrection? First, do we believe that Jesus Christ was read, raised from dead and second, do we believe that people will also be raised from dead one day? I lost my dad now a few months ago. I can't get this out of my mind. He was laid to rest wearing his, ro his white robe, not this black, right, white one, with a red stone. I asked my sister Esther if that was that what he instructed them to do, and she said, yes, he did. I could picture dad running in the street of heaven, shouting hallelujah, with many who are already there, who have been there. That had probably in mind John's vision of the heavenly throne described in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9 and 14. He served the Lord Jesus Christ on earth and was ready to serve him in heaven as well. Church, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is alive in the believer. He is alive in us today who believe the good news. The same resurrection power and live and life that Christ's experience can be experienced in our lives today. How can that happen? See, when we focus, when you focus, when your focus is on God, when you live as he requires of you through the word, through his word and revelations, go out of God's presence, you won't live a resurrected life. If you don't accept Christ as your Lord and save you, you don't you won't live the resurrected life. Having a prayer life is the way to build up your relationship with God through Christ. This is why we have opened the doors of this sanctuary on a Monday evening so that you can come and spend some time with others, with God. Resurrection is not just a future thing. Resurrection is now. Paul declares that he wanted to know Christ in the power of his resurrection. You find that in Philippians 3 verse 10. That should be the prayer and cry of every believer. You don't have to wait. The manifestation of the resurrection will be resurrected only when you die. But it's now, today. Now Jeremiah 17 verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Now I, I ask that you help us live as 
resurrected ones. Leave you, Christ, in us. Help us, Lord, to be at your work. Help us to hear your word, your will, your ways, and bless us. In the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>